The next editor you need to know about, or the next IDE, sometimes people use those two terms interchangeably, editor or IDE, and sometimes people split hairs and get very precise, and they say, hey, it's an editor. It's just a text editor. There is no other support there. It's just a plain text editor. It doesn't do code completion, code coloring, live preview, just a text editor. Sometimes people call those editors, and then they call IDEs, integrated development environments, IDEs. And those have all that stuff like text editor, code completion, code coloring, live preview. Anyhow, I use the terms interchangeably. And the next IDE editor you need to know about is Atom.io. And we're looking at the web page here, Atom.io. And Atom is great. I love Atom. I never use it. I don't know it very well, <laughs> but I totally believe in it. And partly I'm fanatical about Atom because uh, it's created by the same people who created GitHub. And GitHub is game-changing software. So GitHub changed the software game. It altered the game, the software landscape. <coughs> so Atom.io has some really smart people behind it, really great development. And it's totally modular, and it has all kinds of packages and plugins. So it's extensible. You could extend its capabilities. So it is an awesome editor. If you're not going to use WebStorm, make sure you use Atom.io. Atom is also free, which is a strong argument in its favor. And uh, however, we will not, I will not be using Atom in this course. I don't. I already explained that in the last video. I use WebStorm because that's the same, my college, where I work, Android Studio, all of that. So the first thing that you should do if you're interested in using Atom, and either one would be fine, Atom or WebStorm, and there's some arguments in favor of Atom being a better choice, but the first thing you should do, and again, two and one half a dozen the other. I know it's supposed to be... Uh, six or a half dozen other, but I learned it that way. So I always say two and one half a dozen other. The first thing you need to do to learn about Adam is watch this video. It's just a little bit of a funny video. And then if you want to play with it, download the installer, install it on your local machine. And the next thing you need to know is you need to uh, understand packages and how you install packages and how you find them. So I'm going to open up Atom. I have it down here on my taskbar. I've pinned it to my taskbar. If you've never pinned something to your taskbar, you just do this. And so there's Atom. And then I could right-click and I could choose, like here, I could choose Pin to Start. If it wasn't pinned to my taskbar, I'm going to unpin it from the taskbar. I could choose Atom and then right-click it and Pin to Taskbar. And then I could drag and drop this wherever I want it. So I'm just going to put it next to my editors right there. Now I'm going to start Atom. So when Atom comes up, it's just another IDE, and it's a little bit leaner than WebStorm. It's quicker, and you don't notice as much user interface here. That's a plus and a minus. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new uh, project folder. So add project folder. So I'm going to select that. I've already created a project folder. So, well, I'll just create a new one from scratch. So let's go to Documents, create a new folder, and blah, 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 blah. There we go. So I'm going to select that folder. It's my new root for my new project. So I now have that folder. I can now right-click and create new folders and new files as I work in here. So I'd create a new folder. And notice the difference. I did that kind of quick. It's just like a little place where you enter what you want to create. And so here's the path for the new file, index.html, right? And so there's my index uh, file. Here's just a blank file. I could close that. If I saved it, I could save it with a name somewhere in my directory. But you can see I'm starting to create, uh, you know, a new structure here, right? And so it's always just like that. And it's pretty lean and pretty clean. And when I first come in here, I'm not going to have Emmet installed. So how do I install Emmet? I would need to go to Settings. And I would need to go to Install right here. And I click Install. And I'd search for Emmet. Right, and then click Packages, and it searches for it, searching for Emmet. Emmet, the essential tool for web developers. And I would choose Install, right? I've already installed it, so it's there. And the other thing I'd want is uh, Atom HTML Preview. I think that's what it's called. And I'd search for that, 
and Atom HTML preview. I've already installed it, so right, if I hadn't, I'd choose install. And then I could look under packages and I could see the different packages that I have installed. So there's Emmet, right? So there I'm searching in this area for the packages that are already there. And I could change the themes in here, like in WebStorm, and I could search for other themes and I could go into settings and I could change the font. And Atom, you could go in and configure like the CSS. That's how Atom does its display. So you could even configure the CSS file and, you know, make Atom, you know, do transparency and all kinds of crazy stuff to get it to look the way you want. But anyhow, the main thing you need to know is packages. So now that I have those packages installed, I could do the exclamation point and then press tab and it creates a file for me. And I'm just going to delete that extra stuff. We'll learn about that later. And uh, I could come down here and create a div. And then I could go over to my, you know, main CSS. And I could do the same thing with 100 picks and add my semicolon. We'll learn all this. Height, 100 picks. And then background color. And I've got nice code completion. So it runs pretty well. It didn't give me the choice of blue. I know that's something that works. So I could put that in. And now I just need to link this uh, CSS to my HTML document. So I'm going to do an external style sheet and it's main.css. So that's linked. And that little blue right there tells me it's not saved. Watch what happens when I save it. That blue will like change. Ready? Boom. So it's gone away. So that's been saved. I can now hold down. And how do you find plugins and packages? You just search Google. You say atom.io. Uh, HTML preview, right? And that's how I found the HTML preview. I'm like, oh yeah, what's it called? And there it is, right? So I get the HTML preview. I go to that website, which brings me right here and it says use control shift H. Okay. So let me come back over here, control shift H and there's my live preview. So as I change this, you know, I could go green and you notice that nothing happened because this now needs to be saved. So control S, I save it and I could go yellow right? And I save it. And I didn't have to refresh this browser. As soon as my file was saved, then it refreshed. I'd probably at this point look for a package to auto save my file on every key stroke. So as soon as I change something, the file saves. That's going to have pluses and minuses. There's some functionality I love about WebStorm where I would be like, well, is there folder version history that I could roll back? I know that doesn't mean anything to you right now. I don't know, maybe there is an atom, maybe there isn't, but uh, you know, having that autosave every keystroke is another package out there. I've seen it on my friend's machine, and then this will update all the time. Anyhow, that's it. That's my introduction to Atom.io. The get up and get going with it is pretty simple because I don't have a lot of preferences I want to show you. <laughs> like here's how you get my color theme, here's how you get my font. Right here's how you disable plugins you don't want, and so uh, in some ways WebStorm's a little bit more old school. It's like a big piece of software, a little bit clunky, but uh, I've been using it and it's got functionality that I haven't seen in Atom, so I like it. But here's how you do the live preview in Atom, and Atom Atom has a lot of strong arguments for it. Uh, so whichever one you want to learn, whatever makes sense to you, if you think at all in your future, you could do some Android programming. That's something that interests you a little. I really recommend JetBrains. Uh, or go with Atom. If you can't get the free JetBrains or you don't want to pay the money for it, go with Atom. So those are uh, the two main uh, IDEs that I recommend for this course. And I will be using WebStorm. And I'm looking forward to start doing some coding so I could show you how to build web pages and actually start building them. But this stuff we've been learning is essential. This is the foundation before we put up the house. You have to have a good development environment and that's what we're building right now.